Okay, so I need you to promise not to comment until you watch this whole video. Because I'm going to be saying some stuff, and you're going to be like, are they really saying this right now? I need you let, to let me come full circle. Hey, beautiful people. How are you all doing today? It's your girl, Maria David. And I'm back again with another interesting video. So this particular video is an illustration or... Will I say a theory or an explanation of people saying that men are incapable of loving a woman men are not capable of love they can't love women because of so many reasons i need you all to watch this video to the end trust me you will find it very interesting and we'll come back and talk about it okay so i need you to promise not to comment until you watch this whole video because i'm gonna be saying some stuff and you're gonna be like are they really saying this right now? I need you to let, to let me come full circle. Okay, just disclaimer. The reason that the majority of y'all have an issue with me claiming that men are incapable of love, which is a, which is a fact, and I can prove it, okay, with, sci with science, not out, of the, not out of the crack of my behind. Ah. The reason that y'all have a problem. I tagged the video below so you can watch that whole video if you want to but the claim of men not being capable of love, right? And she explained that she also shows the studies that she's read and she shows during her show on YouTube about how she's found that out and how it's scientifically factual. This podcast, I love it so much, Mating Matters. The host is Wendy Walsh. She's a psychologist who applies her knowledge of psychology to intimacy between men and women. In this episode, Trouble with, with Testosterone, she explains that when we engage in physical intimacy in the bedroom, oxytocin is released, right? And for women, when the oxytocin is released in them, that's what causes them to fall in love. She explains that studies have shown that for men, because of the amount of testosterone that they have, the testosterone blocks the effects of the oxytocin, which causes the men to not fall in love. Now, this falls in line with how you've always heard men say that they can sleep with another woman and it mean nothing. That's actually true. They're not falling in love with her. Again, please wait till the end. <laughs> wait till the end. And that would also ring true for their main woman, like the wife or just their main partner if they're not married, right? Is that he may be engaging with physical intimacy in her, in, with her, but his testosterone is blocking the impact of the oxytocin so he doesn't fall in love with her via the bedroom activity. Ooh, forgot the most important part of this <laughs> is that men don't fall in love through intimacy in the bedroom men, she, the, the host explains that men fall in love through trust men fall in love with the women because they trust the woman now here's the part where bringing it back to Prince, Princella the queen maker explaining about how men are not capable of love and how Wendy Walsh from the Mating Matters I just explained to you is that men need to do it through trust I reference Lovers and Friends with Shan Boudram, this episode from two years ago, Do We Really Want Vulnerable Men? Is that Shan is interviewing a man and they explain about how women are saying, oh, vulnerability is, is, is the new sexy. And they explain that that's really harmful, that women need to stop fetishizing men's vulnerability, which show that they don't understand what women mean when they say vulnerability is sexy is that when a man is vulnerable because so many men say that oh you can't trust women you can't be vulnerable with her because she'll use your vulnerability in an argument when she gets upset at you right men are saying this to each other all the time online and lo and behold this post from spiritual word where men are on the comment saying you can't be vulnerable with a woman don't vent to women that just gives them ammo to use against you during an argument Y'all be thinking men be emotionally unavailable, but in reality, majority of the time, we don't feel safe. And again, I want to reemphasize, men don't fall in love through intimacy in the bedroom like women do because the testosterone blocks the oxytocin, which is like the, the, the connector for, the, for the, the, the falling in love, right? And Mating Matters explains that it's through trust. But men constantly are always telling women that they don't feel that they can trust a woman 100%. And I want to bring it back to this episode of do we really want vulnerable men is that the man that Shan is in interviewing, he admits that a lot of men don't feel safe. And Shan asks him because uh, this man is also married. So she asks him, OK, with your wife, do you feel comfortable being 100 percent with her? And he says no. And Shan asks him another follow up question of saying, are you OK with the fact that you're not 100 percent connected to her? 
I'm paraphrasing, but she also gives it like a percentage of you're, you're okay with only getting 80% of the possible love that you could be feeling with your wife. And he said, yes, he would rather have the 80% than attempt to have the 100% and risk the possibility of his wife hurting him emotionally. And so in summarizing my point, men don't fall in love through intimacy in the bedroom because the testosterone blocks the oxytocin. Men fall in love when they can trust a woman. But we have seen proven, men have admitted on this app that, not even on this app, just in, in, everywhere, online, offline, that they don't tally women everything. They don't tell her 100% everything because they don't fully trust her. That backs up from what I'm understanding and what I've heard, what I've shown you right now, is that Men are not capable of love because men don't give themselves the capability of falling in love. Okay. And then we factor in about how we know society teaches men to view women as less than, mm -hmm. to say that a woman is to submit to him, to not view a woman as equal, right? Mm -hmm. Young boys are raised to see, oh, you throw like a girl. They associate femininity with weakness, with less than, so they don't want to be anything like that. They're taught to demonize what's, who is supposed to be their other half, right? You cannot love something that you think is less than you. You cannot love something that you dehumanize and don't allow to exist in its autonomy. W women. And what is unfortunate for any man that would disagree with any of this is that we have receipts of men constantly saying that they can sleep with another woman even though they're married or have their own main partner, they're in a monogamous relationship. Mm, monogamy. Is that they've admitted that it means nothing when they sleep with a woman. Why? Because the testosterone blocks the oxytocin and they don't, they don't fall in love via intimacy in the bedroom. It's unfortunate for men that disagree with this because we have receipts of men saying and agreeing that it's too dangerous for men to be vulnerable. Men say that this society doesn't care about men, that men are not allowed to have safe spaces to cry, right? We have the receipts of men admitting all of this. A lot of men are not capable of falling in love because they don't allow themselves to. They don't allow themselves to trust women. And the amount of evidence of how men have become incapable of loving is either if they're, if they reference science, right? They'll say that, oh, it's scientific, that men are just hunters and women are the ones that are vulnerable, naturally submissive. They say it's biological, right? They've admitted that it's biological. And then if you want to get into religion, right? There's the biology, but then there's also the, the psychological indoctrination, how there's multiple religions that teach that men are above women. It's, again, there's so many receipts to all of this that men have been admitting that they don't fall in love, that they don't love women from the beginning. Hmm. Men are not capable of love. You cannot love something that you are above or is below you. They only love a man that they trust. And even if they want to trust the woman, they won't trust them 100. So, of course, they will not love her 100. And a man can have sexual relationship with you and not have anything attached to you. Even if you're his partner or his wife, he can continue to have sexual relationship with you and don't even have any attachments for you because of that testosterone. <laughs> This is a lot. I want to know your thoughts about this down in the comment section. Do you agree with what it's saying? I kind of agree with some statements it's saying. But then I would like to know your thoughts about this down in the comment section. I have a few stitches to share with you all. So I want you all to sit down, relax, and continue watching. Then I'll see you all at the end of all the stitches. You cannot love something that you think is less than you. Please, 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 please go back and watch that video in its entirety. But that statement that I stitched and that whole video explains something that I've been talking about for years since kind of deconstructing my marriage and my divorce. As I was experiencing the emotional abuse and the enhanced emotional labor in my marriage, I kept thinking, why is this happening? I married a liberal man. I married a progressive man. I married a man who believes in women's rights. I married a feminist. 
doesn't matter. People's behavior is going to be governed by their deeply held beliefs. And because of all of the things that this creator explains in this video, men's deeply held belief is that women are less than them. Just like a lot of white people's deeply held beliefs is that black people are less than them and they will act accordingly. It explains why men who profess to not be sexist can do incredibly sexist and misogynistic things. And these behaviors are so ingrained that they don't even know they're doing it. The beliefs are so deeply held that they are largely unaware in some instances of what exactly their behavior is, that they're engaging in misogynistic behavior. Even the most well-meaning, well-intentioned, well-read men can do this. Walk several steps in front of you and shrug it off like it's nothing. Suddenly have a shift in their behavior and their mood and start treating you like crap when your career starts going well. Even if your career isn't going better than theirs, even if your career has nothing to do with their career, even if you are in no way in competition career-wise, because they believe that they are better than you, that you are less than them, even the smallest successes sometimes will set them off. This explains why they need to need you and that so many of them get angry when you tell them you don't need them. Because if you're less than them, you should need them to live your life, to be happy, to get all the things you want. That explains why that makes them very uncomfortable. Most men do not respect women. They will say they do, but they don't. You can't respect someone who you think is beneath you. It's not possible. It explains all the controlling behavior. They think they own you. It explains why they're fine with women in the world generally doing certain things, but they have a big problem when their woman, i.e. you, starts doing those things. Even if you did all those things before you married them, even if you did all those things when they started dating you and they didn't have a problem once they started dating you, but once they marry you or you have their baby or you move in with them, then they think you should start behaving like the lesser thing that I believe you to be, meaning compliance with my shit. You can't trust someone who you think is beneath you, who you think is less than you. And according to the data mentioned earlier in that, um, that uh, creator's video, if men can't trust you, then they can't love you. And they can't trust you because they think you're beneath them. Even when they're made aware of their behavior and the origins of it, even when they know they're hurting you, they don't change. Or if they do change, it's temporary. And the reason it's temporary is because even though intellectually they know what they're doing is misogynistic, they don't care because they think they're entitled. They think they're entitled to treat you how they're treating you because they believe, say it with me, that they're better than you. They believe that your subjugation is the natural order. So even when they're engaging in behavior that they know is hurting you, they still do it because of the deeply held belief that you are less than them. Men aren't capable of love. I'm, I'm fully convinced at this point. I'm fully convinced. What do y'all think? Love through trust. Men fall in love with the women because they trust the woman. So, yeah, this is so true, you know, um, that men are incapable of love because based on this society, like, they do not tell men that they can trust anyone. It's, it's the bros over hoes, right? But then, like, as I'm dating men, right, I ask them, you know, who's your best friend? Who do you cry to? You know, who, do, have you ever cried in front of your best friend? You know, stuff like that. Like, do you trust your best friend? Everything. Do you tell them secrets? Do you tell them, like, day to day? Like, stuff like that. So many men 
I'm going to start to take this as a red flag, actually, because all of the niggas that have told me that, I'm single now, so I haven't ended up with none of them, you know? But a lot of the men who, like, one, they'll be like, oh, no, I don't have best friends. Or they'll be like, right, I don't have best friends. I have friends I'm close with, friends I've known for a long time. But, like, I wouldn't say that's my best friend, best friend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Men lack intimacy so bad because even when they do have best friends, people that they consider best friends, they've never cried in front of them. They've never told them, like, intimate secrets. They've never really been vulnerable with them. I'm like, I literally, I be talking to some men. I'm like, so have you told um you know your best friend this and that like I tell my best friends everything no I never told them like what why don't you talk to your best friend if that's your best friend like I'm just I'm obviously thinking from a woman's point of view because a best friend is everything to a woman like you know what I'm saying we're vulnerable with her we cry in front of her we cry with her she cries in front of us you know we tell her everything we we tell her all our secrets our day-to-day and stuff and men don't do that like like men are even amongst other men because in this society like it's definitely bros before hoes and even amongst other men they aren't allowing themselves to be vulnerable with each other like because that's gay you know what i'm saying that's that's gay that's what they that's what they call it vulnerability and emotions other than like happiness and rage is gay you know, sadness, gay, you know, like, um, depression, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, they cannot, they don't allow themselves to be comfortable with being emotional, you know? That's why, like, on my dating profile, I'm, I, it says, what am I looking for? I'm looking for someone who is emotional, like, and not even, like, I feel like, a person who gets mad real quick, that's not emotional. I want someone who's like, you know, I'm feeling a little sad today. So I'm just going to, you know, pull back a little bit. But like, you know what I'm saying? Someone who's emotionally intelligent. Let me say that's what I'm looking for. Someone who's emotionally intelligent. Because a lot of you niggas, like, just uh, when it comes to anger, you either shut down or blow up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the world has to change. Um for men to feel like they can be vulnerable with shit themselves with other people without feeling like somebody's going to backstab them like and I think we've heard it all before when women will be like oh yeah like I feel like he was catching feelings and then he started to act funny like men fall in love with women right because they trust them they feel like it's you know going well or whatever and then they start to act funny it starts to become too serious too much for them like we've literally heard it all the time like so yeah it's definitely a requirement for me like you have to have a best friend and you have to have like cried in front of that best friend because like that shows me that you are at least open to loving me loving someone else because you can express yourself in a loving way to someone else you know what I'm saying like that's just that's just crazy like men really lack it like homophobia I feel like affects men in so many other ways other than like them not feeling comfortable enough to be queer or to do queer things because honestly hugging hugging amongst men is seen as a queer activity crying in front of men is seen as a queer activity even if you've been friends with this person for years they've seen you go through your ups and downs it's still seen as a as gay like homophobia has got to end like and then i'm also thinking like if men were more emotional they probably would have access to empathy to deeper empathy to be like let me not stalk this woman because she rejected me let me not kill her because she rejected me because if i was killed because i rejected someone you know in a in a nice way or whatever i'd 
I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So let me not do that to her. You know what I'm saying? Men, the, a lot of the violence that men show to women um, or to queer folk or whatever, it's because they lack empathy. Like, it's it's purely that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can try to make it whatever you want to make. Let me turn off my car here. Wasting my gas. Anyway, this is all theory. And I can tell you the truth. Women fall in love with the thoughts in their heads. Women fall in love with the thoughts in their heads. I've been doing hair for 30 years. Talk to thousands of women. And most of the time when they fall in love, they thought fall in love with an image of what they want. They want to get married. They don't have kids. You just happen to be a dude that showed up and stayed around. You fit the profile. Whatever that may be. You're nice enough. You're kind enough. You're pleasant enough. You make enough. Something's enough. And it's probably not even enough of enough. But we that's what we do. Because if it was oxycodone or, oxycodone or whatever the oxytosis, whatever it was that he said, why are the prostitutes? Why are the prostitutes? And, and and to use a word I really don't like, and sluts. Lots of women are not falling in love with men behind sex. The ones who want to fall in love behind sex are falling in love behind sex. I want that to pass through your brain. The ones who want to fall in love through sex are falling in love through sex. That's all it is. So many women, when you talk to them about the person that they decided they were in love with, and you talk some sense into them, they quickly fall out of love. Why? Because it was all in their heads. They didn't check to see if he was safe, comfortable. Half the time, he's not even slanging the peen like that. It's a thought in her head that she should be in love because these are her values. This is part of her moral code. This is part of her identity. Yada, 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 yada. But it's not the hormone. I'm old enough. I was raised without a moral code. I did a lot of damage in my time. I wasn't in love with any of them. You know who I decided I was in love with? My ex-husband. And you know why I thought I was in love with him? Because we had a lot of similarities. And he said to me things that I liked. He made it sound like we were going to travel the world. And I wanted out of L.A. He's, he, he was the first guy I met that wasn't just trying to be a gigolo. Because gigolos get lonely too. By I think Prince had just came out. And gigolo the movie wasn't that old. And so all the brothers were running around trying to be gigolos. Like later on they all were trying to be pimps. And it was I, I knew they were stupid. That meant you just didn't want a job. You didn't want to work. My ex-husband had a job. He was working. He was going to school. He was doing the things that made him look like a good dude to be involved with. And, and, and he could slang the peen. Anyway, I fell in love with him. You, I cannot say that I thought I was in love with anybody before that. There was a couple guys in love with me. I'd been engaged a couple times, which is so silly. Well, I don't know why I would get engaged at 16, but I did. But I could not have told you I was in love until I met my ex-husband. Where's my other headphone? But I was not in love because of him slanging peen. He was ne never the greatest. He was just good at it. It worked. So, this is all BS. We fall in love as women because we've made decisions in our head. You're the right height. You're the right complexion. Um, I like your family. I really love my ex-husband's family. I still love them. I still hang out with his family. They don't talk to him, but they talk to me, yo. Um, I thought he would make a good father. And so, therefore, I was willing to fall in love. And a lot of women do this. They find a dude that hit he hits sixty five percent. He's over half of your ideas of what what you like in a dude. And then sometimes we go if he has this, we start coming up with signs of you know if these are signs that this is my mate. And that's why we're so angry at a divorce because we picked you, and we cannot deny that we picked you. So I need you men to stop thinking women are falling in love with you because of how you throw in the peen. And all this oxycodone, oxycodone, whatever hormonal issue you think it is. Because it's not. It's not. We just make a decision on our head. I think I'm falling in love. And boop, we fell over. That's why I don't believe in falling in love now. Because I'm walking into love. It's going to take some trust. 
It's going to take some value. It's going to take me knowing that you got my back. And it's still not going to be a fall. It's going to be a slow, steady walk into love. And I need us, more of us women, to think of it like that. But we got to get beyond this. Because if women fell in love because of hormonal things, why do prostitutes, escorts, strippers, and all of them not fall in love well, not, not all strippers are sex workers. But why do sex workers not fall in love when the vast majority of sex workers are, get this, women? It's because it's not the sex. <laughs> but the claim of men not being capable of love, right? Okay, so this is about men not being able to love. I need you to watch the entire stitch that I've attached. That video creator warns you before you react to what they're saying, please watch the entire video. Part of the video is their response to Prince Hello, the Queenmaker statement about men being biologically capable of love as according to documentation, biological documentation, and many self-admitted um, things that men have said themselves. Now, I need to put a disclaimer. I do not fully support um, Princella the Queenmaker, not because of her work about decentering men. That is all well and good, and I've been there, kind of done that, and I appreciate that she is spreading that to a wider audience, a sister audience, honestly, that is, in my opinion, a little slow on the uptake. Um, however, I get a vibe from her that she's not trans friendly and I don't support that. So I just needed to put that out there. <sighs> the argument in the video that I stitched is completely sound and it is gut wrenching and heartbreaking. And the thing that came up to me as the argument is being laid out about how men not uh, men don't tend to because if they have their testosterone over a certain level, because remember with hormones, hormones always work in synergy. So it always matters how much of one versus another is in a human body at, at any given time. Um, but with the oxytocin not actually being able, I literally feel so sick in my body thinking about this. The oxytocin that is released after a bonding activity like physical intimacy um, with a woman when the woman feels the oxytocin, it acts on her body and mind and therefore gives her a feeling of love. Oxytocin is not, by the way, the love chemical. It is the bonding chemical, which is slightly different, and I'm willing to speak on that if anybody's curious. But in that situation, the testosterone actually blocks the function of oxytocin, meaning that in a way, men aren't lying when they say, yeah, I slept with that girl, but it's not because I love her. But it also implies that when they sleep with you, they don't love you either. That, that, that intimacy, that vulnerability that you're sharing with them doesn't actually mutually feel like love to them. Beyond my personal feelings about it, um, there is the also the troublesome fact that for many men, for the majority of men, their desire to pursue sex with people, their desire to sate this sex drive, which they have been mind screwed into thinking is so much more than a woman's, which honestly not a lot of us are very up here, but we're not doing what they're doing for multiple reasons. Men will literally destroy their lives chasing booty. And the fact that they wouldn't be so likely to do that if not for the fact that their testosterone is blocking them from making the meaningful connection with the people which would cause them to be more discerning about who they did it with. And in the meantime, they're running through everybody, causing so much emotional turmoil that we feel and they don't. Anyway, moving on. The end of that video makes a really important argument that um, like one of the proponents of this um, concept was in an interview on a podcast, I believe, and was asked, okay, he's a married man, and said, okay, well, are you, you know, I need to say this, that it was stated that men don't fall in love through the sexual act, but they do fall in love through trust. They need to feel like they trust their partner, and once they feel like they can really trust their partner, that's where the love comes in, which I would think is a way to say that love for them is more of a loyalty thing, like the loyalty generates the love, whereas women, the love generates the loyalty. So this man who's married was asked about his partnership and they said, okay, do you 
fully trust your wife? And this man said, no. And say, well, how much do you think you trust you love your wife? And the guy says 80%. And so it was asked, like, are you, you're satisfied with that? Like, you don't, you're not fully connected to your wife and that's okay for you in your marriage? And he said, yes, because to him, it was too, I'm paraphrasing, it was too scary for him to risk that last 20% because in order to get from 80% to 100%, he would need to engage in vulnerability and, you know, like the everyday trust they built over time, right? That last 20% would require going deep and opening up something very deep and vulnerable to get to 100%. And he would rather stay closed and not take that risk then get to 100% because he just was not so sure that he could really trust his wife. And so the person I stitch makes the argument that like, this is not something that's inherent to men. They're literally not willing to do that work of doing what they need in order to feel like they can love someone. If it is trust that they need, they're not willing to take the risk of being open in order to receive trust. Now there's this thing about love, it's this horrible, beautiful path where you do have to keep opening yourself and risking vulnerability. If you do not risk vulnerability, you never know the tenderness of being touched in those places where you are afraid of being seen. Now, to the merit of the male part of our species, I've made multiple arguments to the fact that women and everyone who partners closely with men, men that are friends, y'all do need better friends, but anyway, need to be safe spaces for men to be vulnerable. I myself am attracted to femininity and softness in men. I I feel like I like women to have mas some masculinity about them. I mean, you can have as much as you want, but I'm talking about my preferences. Have some masculinity to you because like, you just need that. I feel like femininity has teeth and I feel that masculinity has softness. They are self-balancing. It's a yin and yang. The black side has white in it. The white side has black in it. Anyway, that being said, this entire argument, what I really want to say, what this makes me think of is men who adhere to the contemporary concept of masculinity and manhood this is exactly what we mean when we say y'all are weak and y'all are brittle. It's not the stuff that you think is weak that makes you weak. It, I am almost speechless and I'm hyperlexic over the fact that men are afraid of opening themselves up and becoming vulnerable because their ego is so important to them. The idea of risking being betrayed and not being seen is so painful to them they will stay locked in a prison that is medically, biologically on paper shown. The concept of manhood is killing men. Y'all are out here dying of manhood, but you would rather stay in that boxed, rigid, brutal, inflexible, cracking ego than risk the vulnerability of being fully known so that you could know what love actually is. Meanwhile, women are out here getting our hearts broken again and again and again, and they're suffering and we're standing up and fighting and suffering and standing up and fighting and persisting. You cannot be serious. This is exactly what we mean when we say y'all are not the leaders. And it's fine that you're not. And it's fine that you're hurt. And it's fine that you're suffering. But God willing, there must be something in you that is willing to evolve. And you must find it. You must grow it. Because this is beneath you. It is beneath you and it is beneath all of us. I know it's hard, and I know that it's imperfect, but this one thing that you are so afraid of is what y'all have been projecting on us for centuries, and that is the best of what we've been getting from you all. Aside from the fact that not only are we not being protected and supported by our brothers, our community members, I don't care about whether I'm your your daughter or your date. You should be protecting the rest of us just like you protect a friend, like we protect everyone else. Humans, arm in arm. But not only are we not getting that, we 
are getting offed. We are getting abused in much larger and unbelievable numbers. I will acknowledge that it happens to all of us, but you know what I'm talking about. This is unacceptable. I know that you have it in you because you are human. And I am demanding that y'all find the humanity and within it the strength to evolve. This is unbelievable. Do something. If you see it, definitely you're enjoying this video. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Comment your thoughts about this video down in the comment section. I feel like the idea they've put in men to make men feel superior over women makes them to not trust you and not to love you and treat us anyway. It all makes sense now. It all makes sense now. And the part that I didn't agree with, with the part, part that he was saying, um, men might not love you. Well, okay, women fall in love more when they sleep with you, but they release oxytocin while me, the men, they do not. I really don't believe in that because a woman will fall in love with you if she wants to fall in love with you. It doesn't matter if you release your exercise. Most men that sleep with women don't even know how to do it well. Some women just sleep with men because they just want to. It depends on the connection you have with the man to determine if you're going to release the oxytocin, if it's going to happen. In fact, some men fall in love with women or some men will like a woman because of or after they've had sexual relations. That's my own take. I don't think I must believe that all women will, when they sleep with you, they have this connection with you. No, not all. Sometimes a woman might really like you, but when you get on the bed with her, she's off. Like, is this, this all you can? Is this all you can offer? You know. But then, this all makes sense to see the way men treat women. Now we know that they cannot. They cannot respect they cannot fully love somebody that they are superior over and we women are superior over them that's why we see men useless men everywhere that treats their woman badly with their full confidence knowing that you're actually what they are doing is bad they still don't care they will still keep doing this because what can you do i'm a man that's what they tell you and if sometimes when you see a man being feminist and behaving like a woman they be like, you're behaving like a woman. Like, it's, a, it's like an insult. Behaving like a woman is like an insult to a man. So, this all makes sense. Like, this theory all makes sense. I, I'm like, I believe some parts. I accept some parts and I don't accept that other part. But I feel like all he said, I can see it now. Like, it's clearly, now we know that men are incapable of love. And yeah, it's just wow. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this one. I don't want this video to be longer than this. That's why I don't want to talk too much. Anyways, thank you so much for sticking around to this point. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and all of that good stuff. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.